This video is brought to you by PlayAsia.com. Fans are eagerly awaiting the Western release of Persona 5 Royal, whose release date is rapidly approaching with it hitting Western shores March 31st for PlayStation 4. Already released in Japan last October, Royal is an updated release of Persona 5 that adds a wide array of new features similar to Persona 4 Golden and Persona 3 Fez before it. As we get closer to release, more info has been getting revealed by the Atlas staff in charge of the English localization, and in some of the latest rounds of interviews, staff have revealed that there will be some changes to controversial dialogue previously included when the game was released the first time around. The two scenes specified as scene changes involve a pair of gay characters hitting on some of the male main characters in two separate incidents throughout the game. One of the scenes occurs during a visit to a red light district in Shinjuku, and then the other one happens later on when visiting the beach. These scenes caused controversy among some players for reasons such as their very stereotypical depictions, the fact that they are the most prominent gay characters in Persona 5 are also due to them acting sexually aggressive and towards minors. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to go check the full scenes out. But back to the new localization comments, first we go to an interview with GameSpot where project lead and localization veteran Yu Namba was asked a range of questions pertaining to bringing the game to western shorts. In the interview he was asked whether there have been any script or voice acting changes for the new version, to which he says, yes there are, there were some lines that were kind of awkward some of the things that material wise we wanted to go over once more and maybe we could do a little bit different with localization this time around. So we took this opportunity to get more into the original content, so yes on certain lines. Then in the next question he expands and says that none of this includes any new pronunciations for names, other than in instances where there were occasional errors in their already decided upon pronunciations. And then it's in a later question where he discusses the previously mentioned changes with game Spot asking, there's still content that doesn't go over well for the audience. How much say do you have in whether or not that content makes it in the game? Do you have autonomy in terms of recognizing what won't play well and what to do with it? How do you approach that? And you responding, there were certain things in Persona 3, 4 and 5, especially now in 2020 where there would be a lot of talk about the things in those games. As a localization manager I really can't do too much about what has already made it into the game. But in Persona 5 there were a a few NPCs that, while we were doing the localization, our team members felt a little bit of awkwardness about when working on it. And with Royal, we were determined to see if we could do something about it, at least localization wise. On our end, it took a lot of effort consulting not just the production departments, but talking with our marketing and how they would feel about it if we changed how things were in Persona 5 to this new way. What would the public reception be? What the company would think? Whether it would be okay if we do make the change? Ultimately, for Royal we did go with it and I think we're pretty happy with what it is. It's not a significant change but I think there's enough of a change that people who weren't comfortable going through that part in Persona 5 would feel better this time around. Yu then explains which parts of the games he is referring to and says, I think the community had a very strong response to that and you saw that and that was definitely altered for Royal. And then in the next question which asks how they would be changed he adds, unfortunately those characters were portrayed as more like Predatory. In Royal, I don't want to say that we made it mild, but we made it as if they're being very strong enthusiasts for something they like doing. But it's not like they're on the hunt for some young boys or anything. This hasn't been the early reports of these scenes being changed. In an interview recently with IGN, Atlas's communications manager said that these scenes would be changed so that the men were no longer shown in a, to quote, negative light. Furthermore, later in the article it is revealed that Atlas's localization team has what is called an internal content review team, and this is described as very on the pulse about what's right and what to do. The communications manager then says Royal was a chance to make it right. However, you may have noticed that we've still not really been given that great detail about how exactly these two scenes have been changed. Until the game is out, we can't do much more than speculate about how the dialogue will be changed, but this is something that the channel will definitely be taking a look at when the game releases alongside comparing the lines with the Japanese originals. It's also worth pointing out that this news has actually gone on to make headlines over in Japan on Japan's two biggest gaming news websites, these being Hachima as well as Oroteki. Also one of the reoccurring themes with Oroteki articles is that at the bottom 
and there will be some Unicode art with captions from the article's writer. Here there is Unicode art of somebody slumped over with some kind of drink, possibly alcoholic in nature besides them. And the caption says that this is content that's often seen in Japan, but this is different in overseas countries and the world is becoming troublesome. Then there's Unicode art of the person head up and arms crossed with the caption contemplating what overseas people would think if they were to be shown Crayon Shinchan. For those out of the loop, Crayon Shinchan is a huge part of Japanese pop culture and consists of a long running TV show, manga, numerous video games as well as feature films, with a new movie being released every year ever since 1993. Within the franchise has been various instances of LGBT and cross-dressing themes with comedic intent, which is likely what the writer is referring to. Another point to bring up is that Persona 5 the animation, the weekly TV adaption of the game, also depicted the characters. The anime was simulcast in English and the subtitles are accurate to what was said in Japanese. Also here things get even more extreme, with the two men being shown to tackle Ryuji to the ground and jumping on him. What do you think about the comments given by the staff at Atlas? As always please let us know your thoughts in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to stay updated on this as well as all of the info on regional differences in games. Until next time, thank you for watching.